Sunrise today, we are still speaking with Mr. Harry Smallenberg, who is the chairman of the World Pension Summit, is scheduled to hold here in Abuja today. At the end of this uh, summit, for instance, what would you be looking at? What, how, what, yes, we talked about the message you want to pass across, but what would you like to see? How do you want to see people respond to this summit? Afterwards. Yeah, well, I think essential will be more networking and more, you know, extending the learning curve. So I think, and that's also the formula of the World Pension Summit Africa Special. It's a for and by professionals. And if I look at the delegate list here, I see many professionals from Nigeria, from neighboring countries participate, and of course some foreign speakers and participants as well. So that's that's very good. And I think uh, it's about understanding the differences in systems. Uh, I think that can speed up the process of development. And uh, of course, every country has got its cultural specifics and its own economic drive. Uh, there are big differences, like in Europe, actually. You know, in Africa, it's a world on its own. You know, we always think in the West, and I come from Holland, a small country with 16 million people, inhabitants. I mean, we are just a drop in the ocean. <laughs> but Africa is a world on its own. You know? So I think this is a first step that really helps you know, professionals to get, get more in-depth information, exchange information. And we see it ourselves more as catalysts in enabling that process. Uh, and we are so happy that we can have uh, Abuja and Nigeria as uh, our, so to speak, lending spot for Africa. So now, it's, uh, one of the things that you've talked about is how this can actually assist in development. And you know, it's, it's so tempting. You see a huge fund here. Uh, w workers contribute government also contribute and what you have at the end of the day it's this huge pot uh, for a continent that is development that can be a huge temptation for governments do you see how would you say that governments should regulate or should they have a say in terms of how this money is also spent as well well that's a difficult question and we have seen in Europe what happens to Hungary when you know the balance sheet of Hungary wasn't looking that well the government uh, took away the pension pot and mm -hmm. used it to clean up the balance sheet. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not what we are expecting mm -hmm. <laughs> here in Africa and Nigeria. So I think you have to secure that. And I think to have an independent uh, uh, board that, that manages it and has the liberty to, to invest is important. Also looking at the risk return. It's quite easy to say, you know, we have to invest in these, these and these targets, uh, perhaps directed a bit by the government. I think that's wrong. It should be a very objective way in looking at, you know, what are the risk returns for our pensioners because it's their money, it's an extension of their wage, you know, they save money on their wage all their lives. So you cannot, you know, speculate or do things that are not in, in, the, in the essence meant for those participants. So that's key, I think, and that should be secured first. On the other hand, you know, if you have a large pension pot, and it's the same what we see with other countries in the world, mm -hmm. quite often they go to large international investment firm, firms uh, doing a fairly good you know, uh, rate on return. But on the other hand, there are also priorities within the country. And I can very well understand that uh, developing infrastructure, for instance, in Nigeria is a key issue, mm -hmm. but also education. So why not use partially, you know, not all, but partially the pension pot to stimulate that part of development uh, and also looking at the return of that. So it should be an objective measurement. It should be objective to say, is this worthwhile to invest apart from societal interest and societal support? Uh, so if these are balanced, you know, I'm, I'm in favor to also keep some of the investments, a portion, close to your home because then you can also show the participants that their money is you know, being helped to develop the country. Do you also see governments taking on a huge responsibility in terms, because the laws that guide pension, uh, contributive pensions are kind of mandatory. So you don't have people having plenty of options in terms of what they do at the end of the day. They must contribute. Is that also a huge responsibility on government? Because at the end of the day, nothing must happen to those funds. And wherever it is, they must be invested they must be safe. It also puts a responsibility on government to ensure that there is security because it's only in that environment that any kind of investment can thrive. Right, right. Is, is it, a, is it a, an unmanageable responsibility for government? No, I don't think so. I think but they should know their role in the position. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think if you safeguard that you know, and, 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 and have respect for the, the, the purpose and the, and the mission of the pension fund, 
I think uh, you know they are another force in the game of investing money, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and they are part of that game, so to speak. Uh, but they should not be in control, and I think that that you have to save keep. Uh, have we had any issues where this failed? Well, for instance, Hungary. I mentioned mm -hmm. Hungary when uh, the financial crisis took place there. Their balance sheet was in such a bad shape that the uh, Hungarian government uh, decided to use the entire pension pot to, to clean up the balance sheet. Uh, now they are all you know, at the starting point again. Actually, they are far behind uh, Nigeria, so to speak. And I just had an, uh, a conference also with the uh, World Bank how to reform what's left of the pension system in Hungary. So it's quite dramatic, and especially for the participants. You know, it's, it's tr tremendously difficult when you lose your pension money. You know, for the employee in Holland, how does uh, he or she manage uh, or monitor uh, the savings? Well, uh, there are, we have a first pillar, which is, of course, tax money. Uh, and we have a second pillar, which is the mandatory occupational pension, uh, pension money that goes into a special pension pot that can either be uh, for one industry or industry-wide. So we have various uh, opportunities for that, and some of them are portable in between as well. Uh, and then, of course, we, of course, we have the third pillar, which is saving money, uh, saving in your house for later. And actually, actually, also the fourth pillar uh, arriving, that's uh, saving money for health care, because when you age as a society, the expenses for health care rises uh, tremendously. Uh, and more and more people are forced to take their debt risk as well and save money for later when they get ill. So they are insured to some expect, but, uh, aspects, but they have to have some additional funds to cover additional cost. Uh, I think that you know we are maturing in the West pretty well, so we use the latest technologies with apps to keep control of the positioning of the pension. So there's a lot of moves uh, in, in Western European countries to aggregate the various pension pots, because if you have worked for several employers and uh, you have worked for yourself, you, you might open up with four or five sources that you know are contributing to your pension so to speak so it's good to have that aggregation aggregated position being translated also to the value of when you retire so you can compare what kind of life do i want when i'm 65 in the netherlands because i only have this amount to spend uh, that's what not not what i expected so then you can save more and the earlier you start that process that's why financial education is important you know that you have to save earlier for later. You know, uh, sorry to cut you there. Uh, just thinking about cottage industries, uh, a small business, uh, a husband, wife, maybe children, can they also approach the PFAs and see if they can start contributing towards uh, the pension? Yeah, well, that's, I think that's something that really should be developed. That has, that has not been the case even in the Netherlands, so people could go to a commercial institution like a bank or an insurer and have their own pension fund. Uh, but you know that's um, quite often expensive as well because the costs involved are larger than when you do a collective uh, vehicle like a pension fund. So now the larger pension funds, for instance, in the Netherlands, open up to these uh, self-employed employees, so they can benefit from uh, and leverage on the cost, and that that's uh, I think a very good benefit. So at what point does uh, companies in the Netherlands? contribute to the scheme? Is it if they have up to four, five employees, then they join the scheme? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, most of them are industry-wide. So if you are a small employer with five employees in, and you produce metal products, so, so, so to speak, you are linked to the industry-wide metal and technology pension fund, so you can benefit from that pension fund. So it's very much orchestrated along uh, industry lines. So also for teachers, also for nurses. And okay. Yeah. Uh, the pension summit that will hold in the Netherlands later this year, would you be continuing from here, comparing notes? What will the focus be at that time? Well, absolutely. Uh, I think the DG from uh, PENCOM will speak as well to give a wrap-up of what we have learned today and tomorrow here to start with. Uh, we also... Uh, will uh, we'll focus more on the African development with speakers. So I think for us it's also uh, a very good combination adding more Africa in our World Pension Summit out of the Netherlands. By the way, we have about 55 countries, nations being represented, so it's a quite, quite a large uh, audience. All right, uh, all the best. We'll catch up with you at the summit later today. Thank you very much. All right, and Harry Slorenberg is the chairman of World Pension Summit. We'll be back after this break. Join us again.
cutting today on Sunrise. Rice. And we thank you all for watching. I'm Chamberlain Uso. Well, thank you so much. I'm Maupe Ogun. Well, many thanks. Uh, I'm Suleiman Ali. We're still very much here to give you highlights on the World Pension Summit. See you then.